Welcome to the video. If you're new to the channel but you're looking for content like this, be sure to like and subscribe and comment below. We encourage a healthy dialogue on this channel and would love to keep you with us for the long haul. Now let's talk about some things that you should be conscious of when buying or selling real estate. But here's the dill pickle. I want you to hang out till the end, buyers and sellers both. This is important info and all these insights, especially the last one, are important for you to know at this time. Let's get started. Okay, buyers, get prepared. The worst thing you can do is not understand the current market. Want to write a list price offer or come in under the list price? Well, unfortunately, the way that this market is right now, that's not going to work with most listings. You know, my name gets listed on the MLS as a sales agent when I get a house under contract. And right now I'm getting calls asking from other agents, asking how I'm able to get accepted contracts, whether in competition with them or before listings go live. It's all about calling the listing agent and finding out what the seller is looking for, building that relationship and lining up the offer the way it needs to be written for the seller to want it over any other offer that they're gonna get. Sellers, <laughs> we all just assume it's gonna sell in this market, right? I see listings going on the market with cell phone photos, no professional representation whatsoever. And right away, this is a red flag for me that the seller or the listing agent just doesn't care about the listing or who's gonna buy it. It's hard for me to advise buyers to offer on a property that's just expecting to get highest and best by Sunday at five, regardless of the presentation of the house, because I don't know how much they care for the house. I saw a $1.7 million listing this past week that had a hot air balloon floating on the ceiling and a cat climbing around on the counter. It's a fun photo, but they clearly didn't look at these closely before putting them online. I see deferred maintenance. I see uh, a lack of detail and disclosures. A lot of agents neglect to put necessary paperwork to write a well-informed offer in the MLS listing. Guys, this is how you create problems for everyone involved. In fact, as a seller, you should know that you can request of your listing agent to make sure that all disclosures go out on the MLS in the provided agent links. It's a thing. You should know this. And the more upfront that you are, the least likely problems are going to arise. And the more likely you are to find the right buyer. It'll cost you money if you don't get the house ready and if you're not working with a good listing agent. Now buyers again, not working with a good lender and understanding the lending process. A good lender is someone that will educate you and help you understand the process beyond getting pre-approved. Appraisals are not friendly right now. When we put offers in well over the listing price, you have to know that if the house doesn't appraise for the offer amount, say it appraises for $30,000 less than the offer amount, someone has to cover the difference or you have to renegotiate the deal, which in this market, no seller is gonna do. They wanna see gap coverage, that's what it's called. Now, some lenders can cover some of that gap, but often I have to coach buyers through figuring out how much money we have uh, for what the lender can't cover. This is all stuff that you should go over before you start putting offers in. These are things a good lender can help you understand and navigate as well. And let's be real, you want someone that you can get along with. They really are a part of the team and should be a helpful resource for you up until the moment that the deal closes. Closing on time is important. Rates are going up and if you don't meet your close date because of a lender issue and it released your, your rate lock, you could end up with a much higher monthly payment and it could default your ability to buy and cause the deal to fall apart. You need a good, knowledgeable lender that cares about you and understands what you need. Now sellers selling to iBuyers. Let's call out the elephant in the room and say that Zillow fell out of business doing it because it's not a good business model, it, it, at least for them. Look, I understand it might save some time. Maybe you like having a customer service representative. I don't know, there are definitely ways that I can see this being easier and fitting some people's schedules a little better, but you're not going to get a high market value from an iBuyer, at least not in my opinion, because that's not how the model is successful. The companies that are still doing this can't stay in business if they're not making a profit on the deals. In some instances, if you can't do the work on your house that's needed, or if you want to avoid showings or whatever your case may be, this may still be a good option. But the price difference between working with an agent versus an iBuyer can be pretty dramatic. You can make a lot more money going to market with an agent in most instances. Another agent did an analysis with a seller recently and provided these case studies to show they can make dozens of thousands more working with an agent than with an iBuyer offer that they received. 
Try to get as much info as possible on closing costs, repair values, get quotes from many different iBuyers if you want to go this route. Because I'm not saying that you have to use a realtor to sell your house, but you do need to do your research because I've seen people lose money with iBuyers and with investors that didn't make reasonable offers up front. I've even worked with my own sellers to consider and vet those iBuyer and investor offers. And even if they weren't paying a commission on those offers, it was still far less than they made by eventually going to market. Another buyer mistake is to assume that you can just go to the listing agents for a house you want to buy directly. Now, like call the number on the listing to see if you can make an offer. And if you're wanting to avoid working with an agent, I guess feel free to give this a shot. Let me know how it goes. But you should know a couple of things that are happening under the hood with pretty much every listing. Not all listing agents will be interested in working with both parties on a transaction, which if there's a listing agent, that's effectively what's gonna happen. Legally in Tennessee, you can't be a dual agent, so you default to a facilitator. Now, some sellers are going to take issue with this as well. Uh, in fact, in my experience, listing agents don't take calls from unrepresented buyers. Instead, they refer those calls out to buyer's agents on their team if they have one or at their agency to avoid the headache of doing twice the work on the deal. And that brings me to one other thought. You're not actually saving any money by working with a buyer's agent. If this is something that you're thinking, buyer's agency is paid by the seller per the current listing agreements and industry standards. Now, it can't be negotiated otherwise. And some buyer's agents will actually require their buyers to pay like a difference if they don't get compensated enough with the agreement they have with the sellers, right? But that's rare in my experience and something that you can work out with your agent before you go out and start making offers. Now, this is the last note. It's for both buyers and sellers in this current market to wrap all this up. And that is that in recent years, especially this summer, as things are heating up, there is a specific issue that I think we should be aware of. Buyers, know that in order for you to get an accepted offer, you should listen to your agent when they tell you that we'll have to offer well over the list price. 10, 20, $30,000 even, more. Expect your agent and the lender to then explain the financial implications in this as mentioned before in the video. But as, as a caution to sellers, you should know that the more we sell homes well over the list price, especially if we're selling homes well over what we think they'll appraise, we are causing some of these spikes in value that begin to shake the confidence of buyers and affect how real estate will be valued in the future. It's not a caution that you shouldn't take the highest and best offer you get, but I always try to advise both my buyers and sellers who need to be conscious not to overprice this market or accept an offer that is so bloated to the point that it creates unnecessary risk to the buyer and, and to the neighborhood value over time, especially to affordable home problems. These agents that I work deals with tend to agree with me on this point. And in fact, the most direct consequence that I'm seeing, and it seems backwards, but sellers aren't sure if they want to sell now because they're afraid they're not going to be able to afford to buy in this market any more than the buyers trying to buy their home. In fact, when I get offers that are well over the list price for my listings, you got to look at those details and you got to go over those numbers with those buyers. So as the listing agent, I'll call people and confirm from their buyers that they've got the ability to cover that gap. If I think it's a reasonable gap and often it, it, it's, it's happening less now because people are having to do it more often. But I have had many phone calls with agents that didn't even consider that when they put the offer in and they just said, no, nah, I'm just offering you hundred grand over the list price to get the bid. Well, that's not gonna work, folks. It's just not gonna work. Now, I don't know how much we can do about all this, but I do know that it's up to the sellers to dictate how much they're gonna take for their home. Know who you want your buyer to be. And buyers really can only buy what they can afford. So, anyways, plenty of food for thought. I hope that you enjoyed, and I hope that you'll comment below, let me know what you think. Again, like and subscribe so we can be in touch. Follow me on Instagram, I'm on there all the time. I'd love to get to know you better and talk in the comments and do all the things that we do on the YouTubes and social medias. I'll talk to you soon.